Hello, my name is Anna Marshall-Brown and I'm a small animal veterinary surgeon working at Roebuck Veterinary Group in Stevenage in Hertfordshire. Christmas is a very exciting time of year for most people and for most dogs, but it can pose a few risks for dogs and also can be a slightly stressful time of year if you've got a dog that's a bit more nervous than most. So today we're going to be talking about particular risks posed at Christmas. The most common thing that I've seen over the Christmas um, and New Year period is acute gastroenteritis, which basically means vomiting and diarrhoea. And normally this is due to pets overindulging over the Christmas period. Sometimes this is due to owners giving treats because they think it's a nice thing to do, but sometimes it's because the dogs have raided the bin or got into the Christmas presents. Most of the time this is easy to treat and just requires some symptomatic treatment. And possibly your dog may have to come in for a drip if it's got a bit dehydrated from vomiting but generally it's a fairly minor problem. But if your dog eats far too much, it may get bloat. Now bloat is when the stomach gets very, very full and distended, and it can be an incredibly painful condition. If you think your dog has eaten far too much and seems to be in some discomfort, then please contact us. It may be that it just has to sit and digest the food, possibly even have a drip just to support it during this time. But sometimes, in some dogs, this can progress to a condition called gastric dilatation and volvulus, or GDV. This tends to happen in bigger, deeper chested dogs, such as Doberman Pinschers, or German Shepherd dogs, or Pointers, or Labradors. And this is when the stomach twists, and then with the extra food that's in there and the gas that hasn't got anywhere to escape, it bloats up, and eventually, if not treated, it can burst, and unfortunately, it can kill your dog. If your dog is showing signs of really sudden discomfort in its, in its abdomen and seems to be gagging or showing extreme pain, please contact us because if we treat this immediately, we can often sort your dog out through surgery. One of the main risks at Christmas is chocolate poisoning or chocolate toxicity. Lots of owners don't realise that chocolate is poisonous to dogs. The toxic or poisonous amount depends on the amount of cocoa within the chocolate. So the amount of chocolate that your dog requires to be poisonous depends on the type of chocolate and it also depends on the size of your dog. If you're worried about giving doggy chocolates, they are actually specially formulated for dogs and don't contain theobromine, so they are perfectly safe. With chocolate poisoning, of course, prevention is better than cure, so the most important thing is to avoid your dog having chocolate in the first place. Now that might be really obvious if you've got a box of chocolates out on the side, put them out of the way of where your dog can reach. But sometimes there's chocolates on the Christmas tree which you may not know about, so if you pop those a bit higher up where they can't reach them. And the other hidden danger is a box of chocolates that are wrapped up underneath the tree. That's a hidden danger which people don't realise about. So just be aware that if there are any boxes being wrapped up that you pop them out of the way as well. If you do suspect that your dog has eaten some chocolate, then please phone your vet straight away. It doesn't matter what time of day or night, as all vets are meant to have a 24-hour service. Another thing that can be poisonous to dogs is raisins or sultanas or currants or any grapes or dried grape fruits. We don't know why grapes or grape products are poisonous to dogs and it seems to be that some dogs are absolutely fine with eating grapes and raisins and sultanas but other dogs only need one or two or maybe three or four and, and have serious problems. It's impossible to tell from the outside whether your dog is susceptible to grape or raisin poisoning. So if your dog has eaten raisins or grapes or any of that type of food or had any Christmas cake or mince pies or anything that may contain raisins uh, or that type of thing, then please contact your vets immediately. By the time we see signs occurring in these dogs, damage is often already done. And if we don't treat dogs that have eaten raisins aggressively, they can go into complete kidney failure, which is unfortunately fatal. So if there's any suspicion that your dog has eaten raisins, then please, please call us. The other thing that may be contained in Christmas chocolate or Christmas treats is coffee or caffeine. This is particularly a risk if your dog has heart failure, so it's best to avoid giving your dog coffee um, at all costs, particularly if it has a known heart complaint. If your dog has managed to get some coffee and some chocolate, it may show signs of agitation or restlessness, um, it may be dribbling and it may even have tremors or convulsions. Again, please phone up your vets as soon as possible because the sooner that we can treat, the better. Your dog may have some access to alcohol over the Christmas period. Hopefully it won't, but if you leave your glasses around with alcohol in or it gets into a bottle, it may take on some alcohol. 
The symptoms of alcohol poisoning in dogs are very similar to drunkenness in humans. They may show wobbliness, um, a drunken kind of gait. They may vomit or have diarrhoea. There's no specific treatment for alcohol poisoning in dogs. Basically, what we would normally do is do a stomach pump or possibly cause them to vomit to bring up the alcohol and then a drip if they need it to keep them hydrated whilst they're getting over the effects of the alcohol. There's also the risks of Christmas tree decorations. Some dogs will eat baubles because they look very exciting or they may accidentally swallow them whilst playing with them as if they were playing with a ball. Tinsel is a bit of a risk as well and can have some nasty consequences and also the Christmas tree lights, the wire from those can cause electrocution if the dog bites them. Unfortunately, a lot of these things are quite big hazards for dogs and if your dog has eaten or accidentally swallowed one of these things, you need to contact us immediately. Some things will pass through the animal and come out the other end, but a lot of the time they unfortunately don't. The good thing about Christmas tree baubles and tinsel is that they often do show up on x-rays so if you're unsure whether your dog has eaten any of these things, we can do an x-ray of their abdomen and see whether there's any showing up. Unfortunately, some things don't show up on x-rays and that makes diagnosis a little bit more difficult. If your dog has accidentally swallowed one of these things and it's too big to pass through the guts, it will require an emergency surgery to open up the abdomen and actually remove the offending item. The sooner that this is done, the better, because you can get secondary damage to the intestines if it's left in there a long time and it can be a fatal problem if left untreated. Tinsel is a particular problem. If a dog eats tinsel it can have quite catastrophic effects. It can cause the guts to concertina up and then it can cause the guts to leak fluid into the rest of the abdomen. This can cause a disease called peritonitis which is very very serious. If your dog has eaten tinsel, please contact us straight away because we need to try and get it out as soon as possible. This can be quite a complicated surgery, but again, the sooner that we manage to undergo the surgery, the better the prognosis for your dog. Another hazard over the Christmas and generally the winter period is antifreeze. Antifreeze is a product that we often use in our cars and sometimes we might use it in water fountains or ponds at home. It's got a very sweet taste and for that reason dogs often quite like drinking it. So if they do become exposed to it, they will often drink it and think it's a treat. Unfortunately, the active ingredient ethylene glycol is incredibly poisonous to dogs and will kill them. There are three stages in the poisoning and the first one happens in the first one to four hours when a dog may show signs of salivating or dribbling, might be vomiting and might show a drunken kind of gait. If you know your dog has drank ethylene glycol or antifreeze or any product containing this, you need to contact the veterinary surgery immediately because if we can treat within the first one to four hours, we have a much better outcome than if we see the dog a bit later down the line. In the next stage, which can happen around four to six hours, we see excitability, sometimes aggression, twitching and sometimes full seizures and comas. If the amount of antifreeze that's been ingested is large, this can progress to death despite treatment. If the amount of antifreeze isn't that much, what will happen is the dog may get better on supported treatment, but then two to three days later may have acute sudden renal failure or kidney failure, which then kills them. So unfortunately with, with antifreeze poisoning, the sooner we treat the better. And if we treat after six to eight hours after they've taken in the antifreeze, the outcome is generally very poor. So the main message for this is if you think your dog has had any contact with antifreeze, to phone us straight away. Because if we can do something early, then we might be able to save them. Despite all this doom and gloom, Christmas is generally a very happy and fulfilling time with your family and pets. And most dogs will absolutely love the Christmas period. The main message is that prevention is better than cure, so if you're aware of all these different hazards, you can make sure that they're all out of the way and then your dog and you can have a very, very happy Christmas. Mm -hmm.